Welcome to part two of making a plaster mold using oil clay and cardboard flask material. And today we are going to be casting the plaster. We're going to start by using Murphy oil soap as our mold release. And we're going to coat everything the plaster will touch in a layer of the oil soap. So that includes everything from the pour line on our flask down to the base up to the oil clay itself. The reason you coat your flask is because the cardboard, when it gets in contact with the plaster, which is mixed with water, will grow soft and eventually lead to mold failure. And you'll notice I'm moving my brush rather slowly. That's to avoid getting excess air bubbles in the oil soap because those will also show up in your mold. I like to start by coating the sides of my flask first, so that way the excess runs down into your mold and you can actually use a lot of that excess instead of fresh oil soap. Now I mix plaster using what's called the island method, and this will probably be what gets me the most critique when it comes to traditional slip casting, uh, but I found it quite effective. And I don't have to worry about ratios and weighing out plaster and water, etc. Suppose if you're making production molds or very high quality molds, you would want to worry about those things. But these are kind of relatively straightforward single part molds and uh, not really worth my time to go through all that. You'll notice I'm storing my plaster in a plastic bag. I live down here in Florida and uh, Humidity is a real concern for your shelf life of your dry plaster. So I mentioned the island method. The island method is just that. You build an island. I was taught roughly about half the surface area of the water, about like so. And I'm going to let this slake down for a little bit. And I always go hunting for chunks because I'm not using an electric mixer. I do want to make sure I don't have any big chunks in my plaster. I do care that much. So now we are ready to pour the plaster. We are going to begin by pouring in one corner and avoiding pouring directly on my pattern. I'll agitate the surface just a little bit, make sure it fills out nicely, and release some of those air bubbles. And that's why I don't pour directly on my pattern, so that hopefully as it flowed across, there's less of an opportunity for air bubbles to adhere to the pattern itself. You'll notice I have one small leak there on the camera side, and uh, that's about it around the rest of the mold. Uh, so I must have missed some hot glue there, but uh, apart from that, now we wait. The cure time varies by temperature of your water, temperature of the air, and also how thick your mixture was. But generally, rule of thumb, you wait for it to heat up and cool back down again. Plaster is a chemical reaction that is exothermic in nature. It gives off heat. Uh, so you'll, you'll be able to feel the heat from the plaster itself. And that can be your indicator for when it's ready to demold after it's heated up and cooled back down again. And that's the principal reason you never use this type of plaster in body casting. It heats up to really an unsafe level. Uh, body casting plaster is an entirely differently mixed material. Uh, so never, never ever use this plaster and uh, burlap on the body. It heats up too much. So it has been about two hours. The mold has warmed up and cooled back down again. And now you can begin to strip your mold. You'll notice where the oil soap protected the cardboard. The plaster comes off very easily. Just 
just strip your mold away. Clean up some residual hot glue. Now after stripping the flask from your mold, you're ready to pop it loose from your pattern. And there is a simple one part plaster mold of an oil clay pattern using a cardboard flask. And I'll come through with a sure form and clean this up so I don't have plaster chips breaking off into my clay. And uh, I'll wash it down and it'll be ready to use. And that's it.